Welcome. Today we're going to talk about dilations and a dilation, if you take your cell phone and spread your fingers over a photo, it typically expands the photo or if you bring them together, it condenses it. That's what a dilation is. And dilations happen from a particular point of view. Um, for all of these dilations, we're going to use the point of view of the origin. Now, scale factor is going to be um, a major part of a dilation. You have to know what the scale factor is. All of the scale factors are going to be right here. This is a dilation of two, which means a scale factor of two. So, one way to go about it is to draw lines from the origin straight out away from the origin through each of the points. Um, so if I were to do that here, that would be one of the rays. This is another ray, one out this way and one out this way. Now if I've drawn these accurately, all of the points of our dilation are going to be on each of these individual rays. So a scale factor of two. Now when I count out from the origin to any one of these points, each of those motions or movements, that's one, that's a scale factor of one. If I do a scale factor of two, I'm doubling that movement. So to get to L, I go two to the right, one up. Well, if I double both of those moves, I go four to the right and two up. And there is your point, L prime. M, I have to go down two and right two. So I'm going to do double that, down four, right four. And there's M prime. J is left one, up one, so I have to double that, left two, up two. And finally, that's J prime. And K is left one, up two, so that's left two, up four. K prime. See how all of them are on the ray that I've drawn out? You don't have to draw these rays out. It just is a visual to show you that that's on the same um, outward projection. So now I'm going to just take these lines and move them to the side. Not like that. Come on. Behave. There we go. And then I'm just going to connect up each of these points. That one's a little off. I think I moved the original shape a little bit. There we go. Uh, I gotta make that the right color in a minute. Yeah, they're off just a little bit from me moving it in the first place. M should be right there. L, K. Let me fix those colors. And where you see the green was supposed to be here, now it is. Where you see that green four-sided uh, figure or quadrilateral, that is your dilation of two. And that's how you do it. Now, a dilation of one half, you're going to take each of the motions and divide it by two or multiply by one half or 0.5 from the origin motion. I'll put this in red. To get to A, we went to the left one, two, three, and down one, two, three, four, five. So half of that is one and a half, down one, two and a half. Now some of these are gonna be a little harder to draw because of the placement, but do your best with them. B is to the left three, down four, so half of that is left one and a half, down two. So there's B prime, A prime. C is de straight down, left, right, nothing, straight down three. So I'm going to go down one and a half. Yep. 
and there's C prime. D is to the right 2, down 5. So that's right 1, half of it, down 1, 2, and a half. And there's D prime. So now we just have to connect these up. B to A, A to D, D to C, and back to B. And there is your half scale dilation, or a scale factor of one half dilation. Here's the next one, a dilation of one and a half. So we need to pick a point. Now remember, it's always from the origin in these situations. You can have a dilation from another point, um, and you would draw out those lines to help you maybe, or count from that point. In this case, I'll do K first. K is straight down two. One and a half times two would be uh, three. So one and a half of two is three. There's K prime. Positive one down two. Positive one and a half down three. There's N prime. L is negative two, positive two. So that's negative two times one and a half is three. So negative three, positive three, there's L prime. M is at positive two, positive three. Three times one and a half, sorry, two times one and a half is three. Uh, three times one and a half is one, two, three, four and a half. There's M prime. So now if we just connect this up, uh, you'll be able to see your final result here. And there is your dilation of this one. There we go, that's a little better. Here's a dilation of one-fourth, so we're multiplying each of the movements by one-fourth. Give it a try, it's a little bit tricky. Give it a try with some large graph paper and see what you can do. Once you've unpaused, I'll do it out for you. All right, let's do this out. I'm going to take um, from Q, that's a motion of up one. So one fourth of that, it's kind of hard to draw some of these because they're really close. I'll call that about one fourth. R is to the right two, up two. One fourth of that would be to the right one half, up one half. So that's dead center of that square, if I've done that correctly. Uh, P is to the right one down two. So that's right one fourth down one half. And that would be about there. And S is to the right three, one, two, three, no, four, down three. So that's to write one down three quarters. So there would be S prime, P prime, Q prime, and R prime. Let me draw those out so that you can see that connection. Really small shape here because it's one-fourth the size of the previous shape. Next to last problem here, three and a half. So if I'm taking this triangle and going out three and a half times movement, this is up straight one, so three and a half times that would be three and a half. One, two, three and a half. There's your K prime. Okay, there we go. Uh, L is down one, right one, so that's down three and a half, right, one, two, three and a half, right in the center of that, L prime. J is directly uh, left one, so that's left one, two, three and a half, J prime. Just have to connect these up, and this one will be done. So that's a three and a half times dilation. Our final one is a dilation of negative one. Now, that's really a strange one. Um, if we were drawing the regular 
rays out from this. This ray, let me fix that. Uh, all right, there we go. This ray that I'm going to draw you, um, this is the positive ray. It's going out from zero, going this way, out from zero, going through here, and out from zero, going through here. Now the negative of that is going to be, now I'll draw it in red so you can see it. Um, it's the opposite direction. So this one starts here and goes this way. That's the negative motion. This one's going to be a little tricky. I'll start from here just so that I have the right angle. Uh, might be a little bit off, but it's pretty close. And then this one through zero, zero. Hopefully I've drawn these correctly. Uh, now I'll just shrink that up a little bit. And then I have my negative ray here. All right. So, in the, the motion here, to go to x, it's straight down 1. So the opposite of that, or if I multiplied that by a negative 1, would be up 1, and that would be x prime. The y is down 4, left 1, so it would be up 1, 2, 3, 4, right 1. There's y prime. See how it's along that ray. And then w is to the left 3 and down 4. So I'm going to go right 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4. See, it's still on that ray, w prime. And so if I just connect these up, I've got my negative dilation of that. It's, it's basically a mirror image of that. In fact, that's what your iris does, the lens in your eye, when you're viewing something. It actually takes it and flips it over when it goes through the lens. And what you have on your retina is the inverse or negative dilation. It's probably a lot smaller because it can't possibly fit the full size. So it's, it's a lot smaller. It's what fits on your iris, uh, your retina. Um, and your brain translates it. So I hope that was helpful, and that's it for today.